Hi there and welcome to a what will hopefully be a quick guide on some ED radiology guidance. And do forgive me for starting with an American meme. I know that you're not ER doctors, but uh, it illustrates the point nicely about how important it is to see your patient, get a good history and get a good physical exam before requesting any particular imaging examination. Um, Radiology is governed by something called the Ionizing Radiations Medical Exposure Regulation, and they were last updated in 2017. And you'll hear these colloquially referred to as ARMA, uh, and the text is on the screen. But ultimately, by law, it is required that all x-rays be justified, and if not, these requests will be rejected. So it helps you get your patient seen a lot quicker if we get a good request. So when we talk about justification, what do we mean? The best metaphor that I was given to think about this is to treat radiation as a controlled drug. You wouldn't give any drug without a good reason. And the same should be true for any x-ray examination or CT request or any imaging. We need to know why you're giving them, how is this going to help your patient? So when you're writing your request, think what, where, and why. What have they done? Um, so give us as complete a history as you can. Um, where needs examining, if you could tell you exactly which part of the patient needs examining, that makes it a lot easier. And why do you need the x-ray? And think about this in terms of how is it going to affect their management? Again, if it's not going to do anything, then you could well be delaying care, waiting for an x-ray when you could be doing something else. And I want to reiterate that a, a good history directly affects the quality of the report. If, if the more complete picture we have, the easier it is to give you the answer that you need. So when we say com relevant previous medical history, what do we mean? So have they got any previous cancer? Have they got any underlying conditions, particularly ones that might contribute to a loss of bone density? Have they had any previous surgery? Have they had any previous injury? And could you tell if there is a specific point of pain? I always say, can you ask the patient to point with one finger to the point that hurts the most? Obviously, sometimes they will gesture to their entire limb. Um, but if you can do that, it really helps narrowing down the injury a lot easier. And if you can be certain with how they injured it, that's useful as well. For example, did they, if they've turned an ankle, did they turn it inwards or outwards? Because there are certain fracture patterns that we know to look for. So again, forgive us another meme, but it really is to illustrate the point uh, that artifacts really do have a negative effect on image quality. And sometimes patients arrive in imaging entirely unprepared for an examination. When we talk about preparation, what do we mean? So there's really two things I want to talk about today, which is things that can cause artifacts and pregnancy. So artifact is basically anything on the image that shouldn't be there, be that clothing, be that jewellery, be that ECG wires. Um, all these things, if possible, need to be removed before a patient comes around to imaging, especially if they are being transported on a trolley or a bed. Um, ED X-ray at the Royal does not have any changing facilities. So when we have to get patients changed, they have to get changed in the X-ray room. This is not ideal because it's controlled area, so it needs to be monitored. So it's not great for patient dignity. Uh, and also any time spent changing a patient in an X-ray room is not time spent X-raying patients in an X-ray room. So it doesn't contribute towards delay. And as an aside to this, um, with regarding to pregnancy, if you think there is any chance that your patient could be pregnant or if there's any possibility at all that they could be pregnant, please check that they're not pregnant. And if they are pregnant, explain the risk versus benefit of the test that you're sending them for before they get to x-ray. It is the responsibility of the referrer to explain this to the patient. So here's just a good example on artifacts. If you look very, very closely, you will see that this patient is wearing a DKNY t-shirt. Uh, this was picked up, but if you think about all the lines that can manifest on a chest x-ray, it's very easy for this to be misconstrued as pathology. If you have a look at this case now, uh, you can see the sternotomy wires, you can see the ECG wires, um, but because this film is quite busy on initial interpretation, the fact that there is a retained wire in the hyla was missed, and you can see that just here. 
So sooner or later, you will find yourself exclaiming, why hasn't my x-ray been done? And before you pick up the phone in a rage, uh, I would just like you to consider the following. So was it justified? And this is a, a being the bonnet of everyone who works in radiology, that it is a request for imaging, not an order for imaging. We're not Pizza Hut. So it could well have been bounced back if it was deemed to be unjustified. And have you checked that your images are on packs before you called? Please make sure you do that because I've answered the phone on many occasions for the images already to be there. Assuming that it hasn't, the x-ray hasn't been done and the request hasn't been rejected, then make sure that you chase up reporters, escorts or oxygen. And these are all things that can delay a patient coming around for imaging and ensure that there is a nerve center task. And if possible, please put that on after the imaging request. Um, the patient won't come around and won't get examined without both of those. And as a way to help this process, if you could put the, the contact details on the request, um, that makes life a lot easier for us chasing things. Now, it's not the responsibility of radiology to chase uh, poorly justified requests, but in when time allows, we do try to, and it makes it a lot easier if we know the person who requested it and where to get hold of them. So back onto some preparation, but specifically thinking about CT, if your patient is having a contrast examination, or if there's a chance they're going to need a contrast examination, then it needs to be a pink cannula, so that's 22 gauge or greater. Um, it might sound like pedantry, but it needs to be this size because the contrast that flows in goes in at a high rate, and uh, it's less than that, it simply won't work. Also, please don't annul cannulate over clothing. I've seen many occasions where someone's had their sleeve rolled up and a cannula put in, um, which then makes removing that item of clothing extremely difficult. So OPGs, do forgive a Pikachu t-shirt, but I'm sure it will make the image more memorable. If your patient cannot stand up straight or sit up straight, then it's extremely hard to get a good OPG. This is the position that we need a patient to maintain. So if they have an extreme of kyphosis or are very, very intoxicated, then it, it makes an OPG very difficult. Um, so just bear this in mind when you're requesting. Also, um, the OPG machine is in Balmoral. So particularly if it's out of hours, this can result in a delay in getting your patient seen. A note on NG tubes. So before sending for a chest x-ray, uh, make sure the NG tube is in. Uh, make sure that it's inserted to 50 to 60 centimeters. Make sure that you've attempted an aspirate and make sure that the guide wire has been removed. Uh, if your patient is extremely tall or extremely short, uh, so that 50 to 60 centimeters might not be appropriate, uh, please document that on the request. So once your x-ray has been obtained, you'll want to have a look at it and you'll look at it on PACS. PACS can be found on Nerve Center if you go through the external application section. Uh, once you've opened your images, and I cannot reiterate this enough, please check the name, date of birth and the S number of the image you're viewing versus your patient. Um, and never events have occurred because decisions have been made by someone looking at the wrong x-ray. So I really cannot state enough how important it is. Um, radiographers are infallible, the wrong x-rays can get put under the wrong file, uh, and medics and nurses are fallible, um, you could very easily open the wrong patient, especially if you've got multiple tabs open. So please make sure that you double check this. Once you're looking at your images, uh, here's just a note, uh, this might be a good slide uh, to take a photo of on your phone to keep with you. Uh, so you can zoom, you can pan around, and you can adjust the window level. Also, it's worth reversing the image once you've messed around with it enough to get back to normal. And lastly, with that last icon at the bottom, you can view the report whilst on PAX. Uh, a note on PAX, uh, that X-ray is not IT. So if you have struggling with PAX access, that is a problem for IT to fix, not us. It's not something that's within our realm of control. Uh, and again, if you're having any IT issues at all, please contact IT, not us. Uh, the details on how to do that are on screen. Um, occasionally, you will need to transfer images to other sites or um, update, open up files that have been sent to us. If it's in office hours, this needs to be done uh, via IT. However, if it's out of hours, uh, then contact the CT radiographers. So, so for avenues of how, um, if you've got an x-ray that needs doing, um, it's 10118. 
Um, if you've got a plain film report that's needed, then it's 17501. Note that number is only during office hours. Anything about CT requests or justification, that's the radiology hub, and that will be on 16969. If you've got a CT scan that has been accepted but not been done yet, um, then again, you want to talk to the CT radiographers. So that will be on 10131. And any other modality, um, consider again it'll be the imaging hub on 16969 if you see a red dot on a film uh, that will be because a radiographer is suspicious of a pathology on it so that will be 10118 now, I worry that uh, this presentation might have sounded quite negative, um, but please remember we are here to help you and help your patients. Uh, and it's much better to sort of preempt a problem. So if you ever need any help, don't hesitate to contact one of the team. Uh, and please enjoy this radiograph of a rubber duck. Thank you for listening.